Hey guys, it's Adam aka Swimming Bird, and welcome to the new snapshot for Minecraft 1.9. This is 15W39A, and while it's not filled with new features like that first colossal update, there are still some great additions to the game to check out today, including an improved Ender Dragon fight that we'll look at a little later in the video. Now, the developers tend to be very cryptic with their change logs. They like to let us figure out most of these new features. Sometimes they'll make it easy though by saying things like better handling of using items in both the main hand and off hand, which is nice to hear. Other times they'll say things very vague like some monsters have problems with their vision now, but we don't have the time to code glasses for them. I had no idea what this meant. Luckily someone on the Minecraft wiki figured it out though. The new feature here that was a big secret is that three types of monsters, zombies, normal skeletons, and creepers, if you wear their head, they won't notice you until you are much closer to them, so you can kind of disguise yourself amongst them. Now, this does not work for wither skeletons, at least not yet. The Steve head, you think that would just, you know, make the zombies want to eat you more because they love to wear Steve clothes, and the new dragon head doesn't do anything on the dragon, but maybe it'll inspire fear later because then that dragon knows that you've killed another. So, it's just these three. But it's a nice addition, and I learned a few things about mob sight, and sneaking especially, from checking this out. So most mobs, you have to be within 16 blocks for them to spot you, and zombies are an exception. They have crazy hawkeyes. You have to be within 32 blocks for them to see you, so it's a lot better range there. But this is halved by wearing the mob head, so zombies you can be up to 16 blocks and they won't see you. That's a huge distance closer. And then skeletons and creepers, you can be up to seven blocks up to them and just get right in their faces before they notice you because they think you're one of them. So I'm gonna put on this zombie head and you guys will see what I mean. So you know I'm not goofing here. I also learned a few things about sneaking. Now this is something that's been in the game for a long time and I didn't realize. I thought that sneaking only affected like your name and if you fell off of blocks and stuff. But with monsters and, uh, and animals and stuff too, if you are sneaking, they will not notice you until you are 80% of their normal view distance. So a little bit closer, 26 blocks for zombies. And then over here, you can see the little line here, 12 blocks for skeletons and whoop, creepers. <laughs> Gotta be careful here, maybe I'll have a snack. Now, the, uh, the mob head is very nice, though, because it lets you get even farther than sneaking. But if you combine the two, sneaking and wearing a mob head, you can get even closer, slightly so. 13 blocks for zombies. And for whatever reason, it doesn't really affect skeletons and creepers. You can't really get any closer by sneaking with the mob head. But watch here. I'm going to walk up to this line, and the zombie is still not noticing me until we step over. And then he's going to say, hey, what's that? That's not a real zombie. <laughs> But if we back up and then I sneak, you'll see I can get a little bit closer to him. I just gotta wait till he loses interest. That chicken definitely knows that I'm something to deal with. So yeah, the zombie's just eyeing me this whole time. But yeah, this is this is kind of cool. I know these mob heads are, are tough to get because you really have to get a charged creeper and then you know blow it up next to a monster for even the chance of getting one of these. But it's uh, it's a nice little addition to have one. It's not just, you know, for decorative purposes anymore. So we're gonna sneak a little closer. So we're sneaking and wearing a zombie head and he's just noticing us now. So that's crazy though, especially with zombies, that's a big advantage. So it's nice that they added that into the game. And of course they're listening to player feedback, which is always good. So you saw this meter on the side, I'm sure. Whenever I hold shift and sneak, I have this sneakery meter. That's because there's a new stat in the game called sneak time and it keeps track of how much you sneak. And this might not seem like much, but this is huge for map makers and anyone just messing with the game because being able to track whether a player sneaks or not is a big deal and you can do a lot of features just by when someone taps the shift key. So that's a nice thing to be able to keep track of. Now, another feature that was also suggested is world selection. If you look at your world selection screen, here's a little glimpse at mine. It will now warn you if you're gonna load a world and you're using a different version. It'll tell you the version that you used last. So this only accounts for from now on. Everything before is just gonna say unknown, but there's little explanation marks right next to them. 
and it will say, if you hover over it, it says, don't forget to back up this world before you load it in this snapshot. So it's basically a big warning that if you load a world with a version that's different from the one you played it on last, you could mess things up by getting rid of blocks if you're going, you know, back in time or you know, getting new blocks in there that it doesn't understand, stuff like that. So we're going to jump in the portal here. Let me put on my armor. I'll take off my zombie head and get my gear ready because it's time for a rematch with the dragon. And she is much tougher this time. I also need to mention that we got those water breathing arrows that were absent from the, uh, the first few snapshots of 1.9. So good. Now we can shoot our friends and let them breathe underwater, which is nice. I'm going to use those on the dragon, although they have no effect. Most of the arrows don't seem to do anything to the dragon. Even the spectral arrows, I'll put some in my offhand, and you guys will see they don't seem to do any additional effect. Hopefully it'll make the dragon glow later, because I think that would be kind of helpful in the end, where it's a little tough to see. She's wily, but there we go. Hit her with a spectral arrow. Doesn't do anything. And also something I think I forgot to mention, the spectral arrows have a different model so they have that little like yellow you can see a glimpse of it there they got that yellow tip to them just like on their icon so the dragon she's got these new mechanics if you missed how the dragon works you should check out my uh my first snapshot the big one that came out first for 1.9 but now the dragon is more aggressive it's got even smarter ai it will charge at you again like it used to it's also shooting those dragon fireballs which are a separate little entity now they have the particles and stuff and they come from the sky she drops them on you but she's going to be a lot more aggressive charge in on you and especially when you're on top of these pillars you got to be extra careful she'll knock you off into the abyss and even the fall damage is going to kill you some of these times so i recommend those feather falling boots of course if you're going to be snacking up but if you're on the pillar or if you are just right after she does her little breath attack when she lands on that pillar she will charge straight at you, so if I get rid of some of these, she'll probably drop down there and try to hit me with her Ender Acid, which seems to have a bigger area of effect as well. Ooh, you gotta be careful. So there's some of those Dragon Fireballs. They've got a little bit better aim now, it seems. But the Dragon, you don't really want to, to mess with... Ooh, she just charged me there. I missed it. Uh, <laughs> you don't really want to have a good sword against her or risk losing it because... If she lands on this little he pillar here, you see she's going to do her Ender Dragon Breath attack. If I try to get close, she's just one big hitbox. Her wings are going to start hitting me. Her breath is going to hit me. You really have to hit her with the arrows to do much damage. And if you're out of the range of the breath, she is smart. If you hit her with a lot of arrows out of the range, she's not doing it so much right now. But, <laughs> but other times, I think it's right after she lands. If you start hitting her with the arrows, she will... Whoa. Uh, try to head straight at you and not even bother with her Ender Acid Breath. If she's doing the breath already, I think she gets locked into doing it a few times. But next time, when she lands, I won't let her do her breath. I'll just shoot her a bunch of times with the arrows. But you guys saw, she charged into me. Whoa, jeez. She's definitely harder to get to turn around. You know, you know the old dragon, if you shot her with an arrow, she'd, you know, or smacked her with a sword, she'd turn and flee a little bit and then come back later. But now she'll keep charging in even if you're shooting her a bunch of times, it takes like six, seven arrows sometimes for you to get her to back off and go away. So she uh, she is, is just kind of more difficult all around is the takeaway. So I'm going to try to get her to land again really quick. She definitely kills many more Endermen than she used to with the combination of her breath and her, her crazy hitbox. But yeah, once she comes in here again, we can try to take out some of these pillars. That always seems to make her mad. She definitely gets more aggressive the more pillars are taken out, so she's going to start coming after me more. And she de she tends to try to defend them, too, because she doesn't want those crystals to be gone. She needs them to be healed. And there's about four of them that have those cages, so you're going to need to stack up eventually, which is definitely not what I want to do when a dragon is flying at me. Okay, she's flying back in. She should hopefully land here pretty soon, especially if I pelt her with enough arrows. And then we will immediately start shooting her. Here we go. Okay, we're going to start shooting her, and she's not even going to bother to do her breath attack because we're out of range. So she's just going to charge at me, I think, here. Oh, she's not. There we go. Okay, so she interrupted her breath attack there and left. It's it's kind of variable, it, it seems like. This is all stuff that we're, we're trying to figure out, like inferring from this update because we don't know for sure. But it seems like she does 
interrupt her breath when you shoot her like you guys saw and she will charge it's just it goes differently sometimes so ooh, geez yeah definitely a much tougher fight you're probably gonna get knocked off a pillar if not into the abyss so maybe not bring all the best gear when 1.9 comes out and you challenge the dragon to try to get this sweet dragon head thank you guys for watching please leave a like if you enjoyed this and we will have more snapshot coverage to come in the future thanks again for watching and i'll see you next time for more minecraft